I shan't be getting rid of this piece anytime soon. This is a keeper for me. Hello and welcome to Watch Maxi's Watch Videos and welcome to another episode of my Star Club. This one is going to be in English and this for a very good reason. I have a very special guest today. He is one of the most active members of my community, writing comments under nearly any video, watching even my older brackets, bad ones. And he is known as a very polite and gentle person. But what qualifies for a real gentleman? A gentleman is a person who behaves in a manner that make people feel comfortable in his presence. And during the phone calls we had and when I read through his comments, I can really say he is a role model for a gentleman Please join me in welcoming Bob on my channel and in my Star Club. Hello Axel. I'm Bob and I'd like to thank you for inviting me onto your show. Today I've got for you my Zin U50. This has been reviewed a lot over recent years and it's got an excellent reputation. And I wanted to tell you today what I enjoy so much about this amazing watch. Okay, let's have a closer look at the watch. So, this is it, my Zin U50. As you can see, I bought it on the bracelet, which has been absolutely fine ever since I've had it. Thank you very much. Bob, I know you prefer smaller watches. How does the U50 fit on your specific wrist? On the wrist, it fits really well. It has a 47 millimeter lug to lug, and on my 17 centimeter wrist, that's just about in the sweet spot. A lot of 41 millimeter watches would just be too big for me, but this is absolutely fine in every way. Oh, that, that looks really nice, and it? Looks like the watch was made for you. Could you share some details about the movement with me and the community? The movement is a Solita SW300. Now, the SW300 is ranked more highly than the SW200, which is basically an older design. And the 300 is basically quite a fine movement. And the 330 as well. That sounds like a really good movement, not in-house made, which means it can be serviced by nearly anyone, given that you get the spare parts, and it has a really long and good track record about reliability. But reliability is just one part of the game. What is about the accuracy? Is it keeping time? This has been really accurate ever since I've had it. It's been operating in within cost specification in the two years that I've had it and it's been absolutely fine no problems at all. Wow I don't have many watches with this particular accuracy. When I look at the U50 which is basically the same design as the U1 it is a watch which both creates lovers and haters. I don't think there is much in between. Either you like the design or you don't like it. Could you share your view on the specific design, the dial, the hands and so on? The display, as you can see, is really clear. I like the numerals, the uh, indices, I should say, and the uh, steel bezel. I like that. And the hands are very clear as well. Now, I know that hands divide opinion to a certain extent. Um, some people prefer hands of a different design. But in, my feeling is that the watch is designed to be clear under the water, whereas dark and vision is not necessarily very good. And in those circumstances, you want the watch to look after you. You want it to save your life, potentially. 
He wanted to tell you when it's time to finish your dive or finish your swim or whatever. And you want clarity. This is a working watch, a hardcore working watch. And it looks after its wearer really, really, really well. Okay, thanks. So far about the design. And what about the hands in particular? The hand design doesn't bother me. I find it quite absolutely fine. Thanks a lot. Interesting and always very valuable to get an insight of someone who has the watch and uses it in the daily life. If you, as a visitor, are new to my channel or are a returning visitor and have not yet subscribed to my channel, it is really beneficial for you to do so because if you subscribe and activate the notification bell, you're not going to miss any of my future videos. And in addition to that, it gives you another level of freedom. It gives you the freedom to decide either to watch or to skip a video. And it's not YouTube or the algorithm which makes the decision on your behalf by not presenting my video. So activating the bell, subscribing to my channel, gives you the freedom to watch or skip my videos beyond any decision YouTube could make for you. Um, returning to the watch, the U50 like the DU1 is a true diver's watch. What about the depth rating, the water resistance? The depth rating 500 meters, more than any of us are ever going to need. Two and three hundred meters seems to be the normal range for dive watches, but this one, 500 meters, and there's no helium escape valve in sight. In short, if a watch is properly designed in the first place, like Zindu, you don't need a helium escape valve. And of course, the same is true of the U1 and the U2. Oh, pretty good. It's uh, 500 meters, which is more than sufficient for most owners of the watch which go swimming or snorkeling or just desk diving no one or the really minority of the watch owners is going to really deep dive with the watch the bezel system of zins is called the captive bezel which is used on many of the watches could you share your thoughts on that particular Zinn technology? The captive bezel is a really useful function, useful feature I should say. The bezel functions absolutely fine. Just this. I don't know if you can hear that. There we go. But it's absolutely fine. There's a little bit of back play, a little bit of back play, but not much. Nothing to worry about. It's certainly not going to come off because you have the screws around the outside, which keep it firmly in place. I don't know if you can see them there. There's one there. I can second that. Um, on my uh, Zinn bezels, I sometimes also have a little bit back play, which never really disturbed me since it's really, really just... A tiny bit and, and not really bad in terms of um, losing a minute or half a minute or half a click so that's pretty fine for me. Another technology of Zins is the hardened case, the hardened steel called Tegument. Does your U50 have that particular technology and if so what is your experience over time with that? The tegumented case is really useful. I like that feature and it means that when I take it to the beach here in Weymouth, where it's quite where the sand is very fine and there's often a breeze, a combination of the seawater and the sand is fatal for most watches. This not a problem at all. It goes in the sea, it gets covered in sand. If, not if I can help it, but it's inevitable. And this watch just shrugs it off. It's of no concern to it. It just keeps on ticking and doing what it does absolutely brilliantly. Rinse the seawater off and you never think it would be in the sea at all. I like the finish actually. 
It's a nice no-nonsense finish, the shot blasted finish. Some people prefer a brushed finish or a polished finish, but this finish doesn't show up any fingerprints. And the case itself, actually, and the end links match up really, really well. You can see there. It's not the case in all watches, but this one is really good. And the other side as well. Absolutely fine. Well, that sounds like it's worth the extra money. And um, from the Tatuented Zin watches I own, I can really confirm it is worth it. And I would go for any watch with a Tatuented case if Zin would offer that. Um, having talked about a couple of really good and distinguishing factors of Zin's, like the captive bezel, the Tatuented case, in the collector's community, now and then, there are some discussions around the clasp. Some call it cheap, some call it not state-of-the-art, they call it old-fashioned, outdated, and even more, some talk about an issue of the clasp uh, opening occasionally unwanted, creating some risk. Do you have any experience on that? The clasp here has it's got a diver's extension, and a fold over safety clasp at the end as well. There, yeah, fold over safety clasp. It's never come undone unintentionally for me. Um, I know the dive extension can cause problems for some people by coming open unintentionally, but it's never been an issue with this one. That's good to hear, and this is how it should be actually. Um, so we have now learned quite a lot about the watch. We have learned about the dimensions. We have learned about the Zim technologies, the pros and cons from your point of view. Um, what has been the purpose? What did you buy the watch for? And after quite some time, how would you rate the value for money with the U50 in particular? This watch is the rough and tumble watch. I bought it because it was a tough watch. And so it's proved to be. And I think it's fairly priced for what it offers. You have the submarine steel case material that's been tegumented really hard. You have a really good dive watch, dive watch design that's certified to DIN 8306 and the German diving watch diving standards. The whole thing is really good. This is a keeper for me. I'm not going to get rid of it or sell it, pass it on. It's too good. Anyway, that's basically it. My Zin U50. Bob, many, many thanks for sharing your views, sharing your footage, sharing the pictures and videos you took off the watch. I think this is always really valuable for the community, not just hearing my opinion, which is always biased and not really objective, and hearing another view, another opinion is pretty, pretty valuable for me as well as for the community. Thank you very much for that. So thank you, Axel, for this opportunity and I'll see you soon. Thank you very much. Goodbye and have a really good time and enjoy your watches.